Let's talk all things artificial intelligence and audio. Eleven Labs, Apple, Meta, and even OpenAI now all have brand new audio models. Demixing is now a thing. Take a mixed song and you pull out the vocals and the drums and the bass and all that stuff and they all sound great on their own, which is something I never thought I was gonna see in my lifetime, but it exists now. And of course, everybody is suing everybody when it comes to like who's allowed to do what with all these, you know, separated instruments and these deep fake like voices and it's all mess. But most important for our conversation, artificial intelligence is now improving K-pop. The South Korean entertainment company called Hybe, who you might recognize because they're the ones that manage the K-pop band BTS. Well, they recently launched a solo music project with one of those stars named Lee Hung, and his debut single was released in six different languages simultaneously. And if you're suspicious, you should be, because that's artificial intelligence doing five of them. That's right, AI can keep that sultry tune in Korean, English, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, and Vietnamese. Now the particular AI model that they use is called Simple Tone, but it's not one that we can use because that's actually the name of the company that HiB actually purchased for $36 million. Yeah, all of that so far, just so Lee Hung can actually change his voice to sound like he's from other countries. Oh. No, that's not true. There's one other thing it can do. It also can turn his male voice into a female voice. So now he can actually be his own female backup singer. Now let's jump over to some new technology that allows you to do real-time voice, voice modification. modification. Voice Mod is an AI firm based in Spain, and they released a series of AI humans that can be used for real-time real voice, voice modification, modification in video games. Um, yeah, so it's cool. The firm developed actually 20 of these different characters that you can hop into in real time. Young woman, elderly man, whatever kind of vibe you want for like the character that you might be joking about or trying to entertain people with to install some software. And then in real time, that's like a layer between whatever you're doing. Usually for game streaming is like their target market, but it could also be for just any video conference. Now on the fun side, this can be used to tell stories with a much more like rich, engaging, character-driven experience. Maybe when you apply for a job, you go down a couple octaves, makes you sound a little more professional. Now the downside is that some scammer can call your grandma and sound maybe close to you and they can respond in real time which is a little scary. Now the company says in response to questions like that, that they're gonna build a watermark soon so that when you're streaming with this kind of thing, people can somehow identify it. And they'll be working with other companies to try to find some kind of standardized solution. So yet to be, but probably in the future. All right, let's talk demixing. This blew my mind. Did you know that we can take a song that was recorded a long time ago, like some old Pink Floyd song or something, run it through a new AI, pull the separate instruments out so you could just replace the lyrics or just like add like some sick new, you know, EDM drum beat to it or whatever. Christopher Landerscoot wrote this article, The Music Demixing Revolution. And he does a great job breaking down how new deep neural networks have come to learn what happens when you combine instruments, separating out instruments from a fully mixed track. The state of the art right now is called the brand split recurrent neural network. And that model's improved music demixing about threefold in the last five years. Yeah, so next time you're just singing in the shower to some Billie Eilish song or whatever, and you want to replace that voice, then just pull it on out and sing to your heart's content. Smash that subscribe button. All right, now let's talk about text to voice because the company that's really led that in a public way is called Eleven Labs and they're in hot water. So Eleven Labs is a well-funded company that you can go online right now and actually create deep fake voices. I've done some examples of cloning my own voice in previous videos and the experience is scary kind of. Like it took me about six minutes of voice to completely clone something that's arguably me if it doesn't have all the inflection, but enough that it could fool some people on the phone. But the news organization Vi went and did a deep dive into how some people are using this for nefarious ends. And what they found was probably what we kind of all knew a lot of people were using this for, not great things. Now in response, Eleven Labs said they would introduce a new set of safeguards, like limiting the voice cloning technology to a paid account, you know, filtering out some of the anonymous people. They're gonna start banning users who repeatedly violate their terms of service, which seems like they would have already done that. And most important, they now have a new AI detection tool. So if you feel like something you're hearing online isn't real, you could take a snippet, put it in this tool and find out. And they're building an API with that, you know, identification tool. So hopefully some company like AT&T or whatever could plug it in. And then when you call in to get your service, they could find out if it's fake or real. I'm not saying they shouldn't build it, but it just strikes me as a little bit weird that you're like, oh, I built this thing that all these scammers are using. But if you want to pay me, I can actually provide you with this API and then it can check. 
You created the problem and you're selling the solution? I don't know, man. I guess that's capitalism. So look, Meta is no slouch when it comes to R&D and AI. And now they've developed a new AI tool for voice synthesis called Voicebox. Now, unlike Eleven Labs tool, you cannot use this right now. And they say that's because it's just dangerous to put out there. It's going to create too much scam. So they're holding it behind their wall right now. But through research papers and examples, we know it exists and it's impressive. So unlike previous voice generators, Voicebox uses something called flow matching. And that special technique allows it to create a much more versatile, wide range of voices that it's never even heard before. Some would argue is completely believable speech. Some would say, yeah, it's still got some rough edges, but it's convincing. But acknowledging the risk means that all we have for an example is this voice sample. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. The new artificial intelligence model that actually synthesizes a musician's voice in with the music that it generates completely out of scratch. So what you're about to hear now is considered a breakthrough because before now, there's never really been a good system that could generate music with voice and making that directly raw audio. So there's not any layers in between. So if you say, I want a country song where we talk about how the darkness will fade away in the morning, you get this. Y'all can know it's gonna be all right. Let the darkness fade away. And you, you gotta feel the same. Let the fire burn. This is long as I ain't there. I'll be there in your life. I'll be there when they A brand new, never before heard song by Elvis. From dust to tail, it's almost gone. But the little pitch tells the heart. When my toes lift, when my hair is sizzling fine. And at last, when he woke up, to the mind. How about a new Katy Perry song that's all about the limited time that we have here on Earth and how we need to make the most out of every moment? It's important to appreciate how novel this approach is. So the common way to generate artificial intelligent music is to first make it symbolic. And then you convert that into sound using the AI tool, wave nets, autoencoders, GANs, some of those kind of tools. And these methods have been pretty successful at generating different kinds of music. But Jukebox is different because it keeps the entire process in the audio domain. It creates raw music right out of the model, which is tough because that usually means that you have to deal with these long sequences, something that most of the AI models start getting confused on when they get past that, you know, equivalent of a context window in a large language model. For example, a four minute song at only CD level quality is 10 million steps. And in the blog, they compare it to something like GPT-2, which in context would have only been able to handle 1000 steps. So they took an autoencoder to make the music into a smaller sample space. They basically compressed it for better terms using AI, but it's still raw sound. And then they used auto aggressive transformers like the T in chat GPT. Although it's remarkable, this is still not a perfect system. And the main problem that they get is the timing issue, especially as the song goes on. So the beginning of it sounds pretty in tune and in beat, but there's something a little bit weird about trying to have the drummer like hit the four beat sequence over and over again on a song when it comes through kind of a stretching process like this, where it starts getting a little wonky after a while. But the cool thing is OpenAI completely open sourced this model with all of the weights. You can go ahead and play with it yourself. And there's even some tools to help you get in there, analyze it, figure out what could maybe be an improvement so it's got a, a nice little community feedback system now. So one of the companies we don't talk enough about on this channel, which we really should, is Apple. So Apple is also in the voice synthesis game now. So Apple's upcoming iOS 17 release is going to include two new AI voice features. So personal voice is an AI that's gonna increase the quality of communication. So where there was something that was sort of staticky or hollow sounding or maybe even cut out, this is an AI that thinks about what high quality audio looks like and fills in all those gaps, cleans it up in real time. It's also helpful for people who just have speech impediments. It can try to fill in a lot of that understanding so somebody else can clearly hear them. Now there's also a new tool coming called Live Speech, which goes the reverse way. So you can type out what you want to say and it says it in a very beautiful, realistic way. So this tool can actually be used inside of FaceTime calls or in-person conversations. So it's embedded deep into the operating system and you can actually train it on your voice. And if your voice is sort of failing or if you're somebody with a disability, you can try over and over again and it'll pick up little bits each time and kind of put them together until it does get a good sample of your voice that it can then replicate for you. So now I got to direct your attention towards this awesome 
YouTuber. He's on the channel MHA, and he made this video called AI Vocals Will Change Everything for Producers, and I was like hooked, man. This was a great video. Now, he basically walks you through this tool, but then plus a lot more, and it's called musicfy.lol, and you can use it to create these awesome synthesized voices. It's basically like next generation autotune because I could just like sing something in crappy tones and like not hit the keys and all the stuff like I would if I actually even dared to sing, which I won't. And then it will convert that to a completely professional singer. That could be female, male, like different tones, like all that stuff. So there's a cool example at the intro to his video. So this is his raw singing voice. Time, we're running out, we're running out of time. I mean, I think it's pretty good. I mean, I want to do that, but it does get a lot better. Check this out. Time. We running out, we running out of time. Yeah, for reals, you just have to belt out some crappy, broken, cracked, weak sauce song, and it will sound amazing. Universal Music Group, UMG, is now fighting with AI services that have used copyright music to train their models. And they've already been really aggressive with companies like Spotify and taking down some of the deepfakes, so they're defending what they see as their IP, their copyrighted content. And UMG actually controls a third of the world's music market. Now this new attack is trying to stop companies from using their music back catalog for training their AI. And we've talked about this because some of the best music creation models that exist right now are not publicly available. Google's Music LM and Facebook's voice box, we've heard the demos that they've released, they're incredible, but nobody can play with them. UMG would be like, I'm going after you immediately. So right now, the US copyright law says that AI-generated images cannot be protected by copyright, emphasizing more of a need for human input before granting that kind of protection. So in light of that position, UMG and friends are advocating for a very solid stance against these kind of models. It's time to get mysterious. Underneath the digital veil of the ordinary, Vice has discovered the clandestine sanctuary within Discord's virtual walls. Here within these secret alcoves, a legion of rogue producers Thousand strong are engineering the future of music with the help of AI. This server is a Pandora's box with step-by-step -step guides on how to deep fake the craziest music you can hear. Designed to arm neophytes with the tools to effortlessly spawn AI-generated covers and original compositions parroting renowned artists. 